part one, chapter one of Little Women is called Playing Pilgrims. It's December, 1861. The March sisters, Amy, age 12, Beth, short for Elizabeth, age 13, Joe, short for Josephine, age 15, and Meg, short for Margaret, age 16, are poor, but they have each other. Their father is away serving as a chaplain for Union soldiers fighting in the American Civil War. The family lives in a small New England town. Meg is very pretty. Joe is a bookworm and a tomboy who writes and directs family plays. Amy is a budding artist, mindful of her manners, and Beth is the timid, loving pet of the family who loves music and can play the piano. The girls each have a dollar and decide ah. to spend their money on Marmee, their mother, Mrs. March, instead of themselves. When Marmee gets home, she shares a letter from their father. The girls want to improve themselves so that when he returns, he will be prouder than ever of his little women. The girls' burdens are vanity, Meg, temper, Joe, timidity, Beth, and selfishness, Amy. In chapter two, A Merry Christmas, the girls give their Christmas breakfast to the poor Hummel family. On Christmas night, the March girls perform a play and at supper time learn that their neighbor, Mr. Lawrence, has sent over sweets and flowers to reward them for their charity. Mr. Lawrence is an old family friend whose grandson now lives with them. In chapter three, the Lawrence boy, Meg tells Joe they've been invited to a New Year's Eve dance by Mrs. Gardner, the mother of Meg's friend, Sally. The girls make themselves presentable as best they can. At the dance, Joe runs into young Theodore Lawrence, <laughs> nicknamed Lori. He's handsome and gentlemanly, and he and Joe immediately become friends. Joe learns he's been abroad for several years and now studies at home, preparing for college. Lori's turning 16 in February. When Meg sprains her ankle, Lori takes the girls home in his carriage. Money was always on Louisa May Alcott's mind, and as a child, her family tottered at times on the brink of starvation. The Marches are not as poor as the Alcotts were. When their mother arrives at the end of chapter one and reads their father's letter, the value of sacrifice emerges as a theme. These girls are expected to wrestle with their own shortcomings, sacrificing themselves in the service of perfection. Two motifs that run through the novel are the Pilgrim's Progress and the idea of the little woman. The allegorical text The Pilgrim's Progress takes the character Christian on a journey to the celestial city, or heaven. The March sisters emulate this noble quest in their own lives.